You're quite unusual in the industry insofar as you have your own Wikipedia entry, which <laughs> I think is a pretty good barometer of uh, having done some decent things. Um, so, given your fairly illustrious record in this industry, what prompted you to get into video, uh, cloud-based video surveillance in particular? Um, so I was, um, I was CEO, I was a founder and CEO of Barracuda Networks for 10 years. Sure. And when I created Barracuda, one of the principles um, that really drove the success of the business was a tremendous focus on customer service. Okay. And so I felt that we needed really great customer service. We had to answer the phones very within two or three rings. Somebody had to be there even for the sales um, customer service was important, not even just support, but also right. for sales. I wanted to provide a similar level of customer service. Yeah. That was very successful for Eagle Eye. I mean, for, for Barracuda Networks in the early days. And then when we expanded overseas, um, I also wanted to provide that same level of service in the sales and the support areas. And I felt that customer service, both in sales and support, needed to be delivered um, in country by people with local accents and local language understandings. And so when I opened up offices in Japan and China and Europe and all over the world, um, I wanted to make sure that my people were there, were actually answering the phones and were there during all of the hours that they were supposed to be. And in the US, um, I did it by calling in and pretending to be a customer um, from different parts of the world. You know, I'd call in at five in the morning or four in the morning and, you know, make sure my team was there answering. And it became kind of folklore in the company that, you know, I would check the customer service and sales. And so people knew they had to be there because otherwise they would get a little lazy and they'd start to come in late because they weren't a lot of calls. And, but I couldn't do that in Japan or China or in Germany or Austria. And so I thought I had this idea of installing some cameras and I'll just make sure that the, the people who are staffing support sales come into the office and they're there, right? Because if they're there, they're gonna answer the phone and do a good job. And so I tried installing uh, three or four different camera systems, none of them which worked. I tried to buy a cloud-based camera system. I couldn't find one, it didn't exist. And I'm like, oh my God, I can't believe this. This is like such a huge opportunity. Um, I've, gotta go, I've gotta go pursue this. And so that was the genesis of the beginning of, uh, or the beginning of um, Eagle Eye Networks in that I wanted to provide really great customer service and what I really wanted the cameras for was more business intelligence, not so much even security. And so my mission is to basically bring cloud cameras um, to folks to basically change the industry so that you can use it for business intelligence as well as security. Okay, good stuff. Um, uh, how, how would you describe the benefits of, of cloud-based surveillance uh, broadly? Yeah. I mean, I think the benefits of cloud-based video surveillance are the same as the benefits that an IT department gets for any, um, you know, IT service that they move into the cloud. At Barracuda, I was very familiar with email. Um, so let's use email as an example. Um, you know, in the email case, you know, if you move the servers to the cloud, basically you don't have to worry about the hardware failures of the server. You don't have to worry about the operating system upgrades. You don't have to worry about the cybersecurity any longer. Same goes for video surveillance. You know, I move it to the cloud. I don't have to worry about the servers. I don't have to worry about the hard drive failures. I don't have to worry about running out of hard disk space for my video. I don't have to worry about OS upgrades. I don't have to worry about upgrading the applications. I don't have to worry about the firewalls. I don't have to worry about the cybersecurity. I don't have to worry about the bandwidth for remote access. Okay, all of these things. And then on top of that, it's pay as you go. So instead of having to buy a big server up front, and pay 10 times what I need because I know I'm going to expand, I can just pay a little bit at a time for what I'm really going to use. And if my business, you know, doesn't grow as fast as I thought it was going to grow and I don't need as many cameras, well, then I didn't buy all of this extra um, hardware that I didn't need. And so it's more cost effective. It's got higher reliability um, and it's more cyber secure. Okay. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're all very compelling benefits. Um, it's basically, reducing your own internal workload and resource etc yep. but conversely have you encountered much um pushback from potential customers in terms of them worrying about 
outsourcing so much of their operation to a third party um, and surrendering control of it almost? Um, you know, it's funny. Uh, when we first started Eagle Eye Networks in 2014, um, we did encounter some of that from what I would call um, the, the physical security industry, kind of like the guards and um, the folks who were not as technically savvy. Um, but that's kind of seems to have passed. I mean, we do not really encounter the, you know, the fear of the cloud um, any longer. And that's because the companies, most companies have moved their email to the cloud with Office 365. They've moved um, their uh, CRM system to the cloud with salesforce.com. They've moved their payroll to the cloud with their payroll company. Um, they've moved, you know, most people are doing their taxes online now. Um, there's not a whole lot of people doing taxes on paper and mailing them to the government any longer. Um, you know, your me medical and health stuff is all done online. Mm -hmm. So, you know, people are kind of realizing that it's better and, and the security is there. Um, you know, I would say one in a hundred, we sometimes encounter folks with, um, you know, some fears or worries. Um, but generally, once they get the IT department involved, um, all those problems go away. Okay. Um, presumably, people are also concerned about cybersecurity. So how do you go about assuaging customers' concerns in that area? Um, well, uh, we do get that a little bit of concern. Um, but, you know, the, there's kind of two, um, there's different levels of customers in cybersecurity. So, like, we deal with a whole bunch of customers um, who are very large and very um, tech savvy. Okay, those customers um, basically run penetration tests on us on nearly a, a weekly basis. Um, they will they take our hardware and our equipment and they run uh, penetration tests in their laboratories. Um, they do audits of us in order to make sure that we're following you know good cybersecurity practices and they kind of put you through the ringer to make sure you're really doing what you're supposed to be doing other folks are a little less sophisticated and just want to know that you know it's as safe as what they were doing themselves um, my argument that i generally use to people who are have concerns in the cybersecurity area revolve around the number of hacks or or, or um, <coughs> um, the um, Basically, you know, the not, amount of data that's been stolen, right? If you look at all of the um, places where data has been stolen, none of the um, serious places where the data has been stolen have actually been stolen from any of the cloud service companies. Okay, so the biggest, the biggest breaches were, you know, Target. Okay, but Target wasn't using the cloud. Target was doing it themselves. And they didn't have good cybersecurity because it wasn't their expertise. Um, if you look at the um, credit bureau where all of the records got hacked in the US, they were doing their own cybersecurity and not using a cloud provider. Mm. The cloud providers put a lot more focus and expertise on cybersecurity than the individuals doing it themselves. I can assure you that if you take a random company with a random DVR somewhere in the world, just pick one, anyone, I am relatively sure that I could hack into it a lot more quickly than I could hack into Eagle Eye. Right. Okay, Eagle Eye has a whole team of folks that are focused on cybersecurity, and most folks, most businesses don't. So you're generally going to be much more cybersecure with a cloud provider. If Eagle Eye gets breached in a significant way, we could go out of business. Okay, in the case of Target, they didn't go out of business because it wasn't critical to their business. Okay. Good answer. Um, so moving on to your products, what yep. is, what's your big focus in terms of research and development and, and, and the products coming onto the market now? Oh my, that's a, that's a big question. Um, so, so we have um, a lot of different products um, that Eagle Eye sells. They're all around um, video surveillance um, as a service in the cloud. Um, the big pushes for technology development, we're obviously doing a bunch of work in the areas of AI and machine learning. 
We're obviously doing a lot of work in the areas of business intelligence, providing information to business owners that can help them do a better job of optimizing their business. Those are all great things. We also um, are turning um, the Eagle Eye and Camera Manager platforms into broader solutions for surveillance video. So we've um, announced a partnership and are enhancing the platforms to support um, body cam video storage, drone video storage, um, car camera video storage in connections. So basically making it so that it can be a one-stop solution for all kinds of surveillance video that our customers need to manage. Um, so that's a big push. There's also a big push um, to make our, um, our APIs um, more accessible, more easily, more easy to use, more broadly supported, a lot of evangelism into API partners to do more integrations um, with our platform so their customers can get more features and capabilities. And then uh, video analytics, we're introducing a lot of new video analytics, things that analyze the video, study the video, search the video, so that people can find things um, and do more things with it. Okay, um, so presumably, I mean, are there any particular sectors that you find uh, that you gain a particular amount of traction in? I mean, presumably what you would argue that your solutions can appeal to pretty much any sector? Yeah, it's pretty broad based kind of customers. We have a lot of um, uh, restaurants, a lot of retail locations, a lot of warehousing, a lot of manufacturing, a lot of security, police kind of stuff, government, schools, um, you know, apartment buildings, office complexes, you know, those are kind of the major groups. And then there's, you know, more unusual things like trampoline parks and outdoor parks and sports facilities and workout and gym facilities. You know, it's just everybody who needs cameras. It's kind of like asking, you know, who, who uses email? Well, <laughs> you know, like everybody uses email, you know, security cameras, everybody uses them. I mean, we even do, you know, a small number of, of high end homes, you know, people okay. who want, you know, quality security and, want to make sure, you know, we have a whole bunch of folks who, who use our systems because um, they've had the DVR stolen. Criminals break in to steal oh, the jewelry really? or to, you know, rob the party store and they grab the DVR on the way out so that they, there is no video. <laughs> With a cloud-based system, you don't have that problem. Yet another advantage of, of, of moving to the cloud. Right, okay. Um, in t so in terms of your position in the market day, and you're obviously number one in North America, in terms of right. the surveillance by a yeah. fairly wide margin, I think. And also yep. you recently, doing, you're having a big push into Europe, obviously right. acquiring Panasonic's cloud operation. So how's that going? It's going actually extremely well. Uh, I'm like happier than I could be possibly be on that front. Uh, Rishi and the team uh, based out of Amsterdam has really done a great job. We are um, selling actively now in uh, the Netherlands, in Belgium, in Denmark, in Finland, in Norway, Germany, France, Italy, Spain, Portugal, Turkey, UK, um, all of the major markets are, uh, we have dealers, we have distributors, um, and sales are growing um, significantly um, across the board. Okay, good stuff. Um... Moving on to IFSEC, which is obviously happening this month now, uh, 19th to the 21st of June in London. Um, what are your plans and expectations for the show? Um, well, this is kind of really the first um, uh, European show where I think we're making a big splash um, and having a significant presence. Um, the Eagle Eye presence and the... Um, before this um, in Europe has always been kind of modest, um, us, you know, kind of learning about the market, trying to build up our staff, um, trying to engage. Um, this one we're, is our first real big um, show where we're gonna have a lot of folks and we got a lot of meetings uh, planned and scheduled and we expect that we're gonna have um, a lot of um, progress. Okay, fantastic. Um... I'm happy to leave. Well, I've gone through my questions. So I don't know if there's anything else you want to discuss. Um, I, I don't know what your expectation was for how long you wanted this interview to be. Um, um, I think this is fine. I mean, I just, I'm, I think the observation that, that Eagle Eye Networks is, is the 
the number one platform in North America. We yeah. also have good progress um, in Asia uh, Pacific. Yeah. Um, doing extremely well in Hong Kong, Japan, um, and a number of other Asian countries. So we've got a good presence um, across the, the global platform. I would say that we're probably the only company um, in the cloud video surveillance um, that has a global presence. Um, sure. You know, and so I think um, that we are um, doing quite well on that front and gonna to continue to push. Okay. Um, and our mission, you know, is to be kind of the platform of choice yeah. uh, for um, cloud-based video surveillance of all kinds. And by expanding the platform to these other kinds of camera types and our broad support of um, surveillance cameras. Yeah. Um, in fact, we actually um, launched recently um, support for HD TVI cameras. Yeah. And the U.S. market, and we'll be launching that at IFSEC um, as well for the European market. Yeah, so we support analog cameras. We support HD, HD over coax cameras. We support um, camera direct cloud. We support literally ten thousand different digital cameras. Okay, There's very little that we can't support and get to the cloud. Yeah, um, making the platform extremely appealing because customers have a diverse set of needs and a diverse set of installed cameras. It's never, very rarely, I mean, actually, I can't think of a single case where I've gone into a significant customer and they had all the same camera. It just doesn't happen. Okay. So, um, all good. Yeah, I, I guess actually one more question before, before we wrap it up. Okay. Um, it'd be interesting to hear about your view on how the industry's changed from when you started out to now and where it might go in the next five to 10 years or huh. Wow. Okay. How has the industry yeah. changed in the last five years since I kind of got into this? Um, well, you got into the, in, the in security industry. Yeah. I don't think it's really changed that much. Yeah. Um, you know, I think it's changed gradually. There's obviously a lot more acceptance of cloud-based services. When I first started, it was really hard. Um, I would also say that bandwidth, um, in the early days of Eli Networks, we encountered bandwidth challenges. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that we've um, overcome those well, with both with two things. One is a technical solution on the Eagle Eye part where we can actually record and keep the video locally. But also I think the availability of bandwidth has gone up. Um, and so that's happened things. And then the other kind of thing I think that has happened is um, a lot more awareness of cybersecurity threats and people starting to grow more concerned about the cybersecurity of their cameras, who manufactured their cameras, what firmware they're using, um, you know, how do I make sure my cameras don't get hacked? Mm. Those types of things, I think, have become much more, um, people have become much more tuned to it, and so there's more concern about it. In the next five years, uh, the second half of your question, um, I think we're gonna see um, even more movement to cloud-based systems. Um, which is why, you know, I started this whole company in the first place. Yeah. Because I think that in the end, you know, 90% of video surveillance and access control and all of this will move to the cloud. Mm -hmm. It makes no sense for people to be having hard drives, maintaining hard drives, spinning hard drives, replacing hard drives on premise to store their video. No. Um, it makes, you know, just economies of scale for what we do is so much better than uh, what anyone can nor any any reasonable size company could do for themselves yeah. and um, I think the cybersecurity threats are going to continue I don't think we're going to solve them um, anytime in the next five years I think they're going to continue to ebb and flow getting worse, better and worse yeah. um, and I think that you know I think people are going to get more stringent and uh, more focused on it right Fantastic. Um, I'm happy to leave it there. It's quite a good way to end it, unless there's anything else you want to Sounds good. Add. Yeah, great. All Thank right. You, Dean, really.